So uh, the agenda that I'm going to talk about here is the history and uh, the technique that we use, some, some statistics, the objectives for uh, making our contact files correct, and uh, then maintaining contact and how you guys can help us. So the history of uh, these, uh, our ability to maintain contact, uh, I think has been that Henry Vandermeer, which some or most of you might know, uh, who ran the CDC for a while, established the contact files. And um, I think he established them around uh, 2004. Ray, do you know whether that's the right year or not? That is correct. I, I've heard it was correct from some <laughs> Okay. Um, so we've got these contact files on uh, our website, which some, are, uh, some of you may have used. And we also have them in the Constant Contact, which allows us to send uh, emails and make contact with the clubs. Um, we didn't keep them up to date. But just recently, at the beginning of this year, we started a program to, um, to get them back up to date. And that's what I'm going to show you. Um, <coughs> we started by taking the websites of all of the central committee sites um, and the information there and concatenating it into a contact file. And then we went and tried to call all the 58 counties to get their input on top of that, and we put those two things together for our contact file. Um, all of the contacts that we made in this effort were positive, and everybody is trying to help us uh, get our files up to date. Um, but we've got more work to do. Uh, all the efforts that we've made since the beginning of the year have, have created a file that I would say is about 90% right. And, uh, uh, we want it to be 100% right, but uh, that's a big effort. So the data that I'm going to show you on the next slide is at the 90% level. Uh, these are the statistics. Uh, we we struck these statistics uh, off of our prior list, so you can see how far uh, out of whack our prior list was. Uh, the prior list said that we had 443 clubs in the state. The new club count turned out to be 417. The, uh, there's actually 15 counties that don't have any clubs at all. Um, of the 417 clubs, 120 of them were new clubs. So haven't been around before, you can see how dynamic the club system is. 177 of them had gone out of business since since the last time we updated our file. Um, and 115 of them, oh, wait, wait a minute, 264 uh, were still in business. So that's about 60%. Um, right now, the total number of affiliates is about 113 at 29%, according to our current file. But I want to point out that the data will probably never be totally up to date because of the club uh, rechartering process seems to happen at different times of the year. Um, and the clubs uh, are created, come into existence at various times. And then clubs go out of existence at various times and the club membership changes. So the officers change all the time. And trying to keep contact with that kind of a situation is very difficult. These are our objectives in, uh, in this effort of keeping the contact file 100% up to date. And I won't read them, but I'll let you read them. Uh, we hope to uh, not only support our own activities, but support other people's activities that want to get to uh, all the clubs in the state. Because I think we're the only organization that has this list. Um, but I haven't, uh, I 
haven't fully investigated that. But it seems that maybe the caucuses would like to use this list to, to get to these clubs also. Um, trying to maintain contact in the future is a complicated operation. Uh, but we may be able to use the rechartering process to, to if we can tap into it, uh, to keep things up to date. Um, we may be able to use uh, the endorsement process, which is changing and, and uh, the state is requiring uh, clubs to put into their bylaws uh, a rechartering activity or re rechartering activity. Um, we could use our own reaffiliation process, which um, we haven't been disciplined about, but we could use that to keep ourselves up to date. And uh, standard formats on websites, things like uh, functional aliases for uh, emails would help us a lot. Um, and all of these ideas, of course, are all focused on the same thing, and that's to have the ability to get to the clubs uh, through emails and on a rapid manner. And this is how you can help. If anybody has information, if you're using our website um, and you have information as to uh, uh, who's new in the clubs uh, or anything that's wrong with the website, if you can email the webmaster, which is me, then we'll incorporate that information. And and that's one way, of course, of keeping them up to date. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Betty. Betty? You don't know how hard this guy worked. I mean, he also made me work hard. <laughs> <laughs> we had 58 counties and I took 31, but he did all this work. So, in contacting all of those people, which I, I'm a people person, I like to talk to people, I really found it fun. Found, I talked to people who seldom ever hear from the Democratic Party, and they were thrilled to talk to somebody. And they would say, well, at the state convention, let's meet up. And then one of them said, let's have lunch. They had really, they really wanted to be involved. And they really wanted to be recognized. I'm going to tell you a little bit. We, one of our purposes will be to train clubs, for new clubs and for old ones to get them going, because some clubs have become stagnated. What I have up here. Is the first thing you have to do, and, I, and I'm not, I can't spend a lot of time talking about each one of these because we don't have that much time, but these are talking points. You need to decide the purpose of your club, whether it's going to be political or social. Social clubs seldom last. I mean, it's a great thing to come together once a month, have something to eat, talk, and talk to somebody who's like you, and they're thinking, and uh, talk about the issues. But somehow, in San Diego this past year, the last, the two clubs who've gone under have been social clubs. They can't keep up their memberships. Political clubs are the ones who really do the work. They're the ones who are out fundraising, they're identifying people to run for office, they're uh, developing new methods to work, like we did with the goatee. And they always have something that they're working on. These are the political clubs and good speakers. They bring speakers in, and that's down here too. The speakers talk about the issues. Right now, you, there are plenty of issues. Immigration, health care, climate change, and education, and on and on. So, and there are plenty of people who know about those issues and can talk to you. We just had a speaker about the water problem, and that was kind of scary. 
But I think, and we're going to have a speaker who is a Muslim, who teaches at one of the universities in San Diego, who's going to come and talk to us about Muslim culture and religion. And I think that's important because if we don't get to know more about them, they will become a biased group in our society. And we will start to blame them for everything and take everything out of them. And if we do, it will make them leave this country and go, and go join the Islamic State. So the purpose of the club is extremely important, and, but you have to have social activities. You can always get people out more if you offer them coffee and a few hors d'oeuvres, and uh, people will come for that, particularly seniors. Now, holiday party we have every year. We, don't, we call it a holiday party because it's the same time as the Jewish holiday, and a lot of people do not celebrate Christmas anymore as such. We have a big turnout for that. Our, our club averages close to 200 members, and for that we have about 65 people come. When you have your meetings, it's very important. If you have seniors, you can forget about evenings. If you have people who work, you can forget about daytime. Weekends seem to be the most popular, but it's really up to you. In our area, we have all of them. I never go to evenings because I don't like to drive down to San Diego for those. Now, the role of the board in clubs is extremely important. Our board meets once a week, a month, and we do all our business there. We have probably nine people, nine or 10 people on our board, and we do our business there. Some clubs have their business meetings before their speakers, but we have found that to be kind of boring and if you have somebody there who's a visitor, they might not like it and might not come back. So we do our really in-depth business at board meetings. We take it to the general meeting when the bylaws say we have to and when we want people to know about something. Now, the speakers I've already talked about, we do have Robert Rule's order. And somebody should know that we, we, we've never really, I've never really known where people have a problem with that. It just seems to go as it's supposed to go. The part that is extremely important is the treasurer. Since I've been working in CDC, I have found out that the treasurer is the most important person on the board. They do handle the money. Some clubs are half packs, and packs are very important. But it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort to have a pack. And you have to file reports, pay <coughs> money separately, and so forth. On the other hand, it's a way of raising money by your club and using it the way you want it used. Instead of turning it into the council of city, uh, I'm not, the council, Central Committee. And they will use it the way they want to use it. Some of them do. Instead of, in North County, San Diego is divided north, south, east. And North County is the largest area, but it's also the least represented by the uh, Council Central Committee. And we don't always get the money that we raise. So we have thought, maybe we should have our own pack, put our own money in it, and do it the way we want to. But that's up to every group to do, to decide. But the treasurer is terribly important, and there are many things about the role of the treasurer that they don't always know. So part of the training that we will have in our workshop will be about the treasurer and the role of the treasurer. The historian is important. Barbara is our historian for CDC, and we always have a historian who keeps a record of our minutes, every activities that we have through the year, so that we can go back and look at that if we ever need to, and we have recently, we have needed to. Now, the other thing about getting new members, or getting, keeping from being stagnated, one of the best ways to keep from being stagnated is to have good meetings. That's really the best way. 
And the other thing is to have your president or officers there greeting people. You should know all of your members. You should be happy to see them. And they like that, and it's, it's very good. My, my club members are very loyal to me. When I run for e-board or whatever, they come out to vote for me. The last time when I ran for e-board, this woman, 90 year old woman, came in and said, I just came to vote for you for Senate. That was right out of Barbara Bucks. I said, well, I'm not running, Ruth, but she said, OK. But they do come out to vote for you if they're loyal, if you're loyal to them. And that's how you get more members, because they recommend people. The, um, you get them from your friends, your relatives, organizations. And then we put news uh, publicity. We put the our news of our meetings in the paper, local paper, and the local <laughs> community papers. And we get people from that. And we have a website. And we get people from that. So it's very important to keep them active. Now, of almost any club, doesn't matter what it is, 80% of the people will not work. They come just to hear the speakers and to be part of the group. And we have people who pay their dues every year and never attend a meeting. And I'm sure you do too. Because they want to support the democratic program. And that's great. We like that. But they get our newsletter so they know what's going on all the time. We also have, we're really located in a senior citizen area. So we have people who die every year people who've been there since we began the program. And that's really kind of hard. We always make a, an announcement in the newsletter. But we lose people that way, and we know we're going to continue to because we now still have people in their 90s. And so they're not going to live too much longer. And neither will I, for that matter. But this is how you keep even though you lose people every year that way, and we do lose people every year, we always gain some. And we gain by doing just what we're doing. We are an inclusive club, even though we're in Lake San Marcos, which only has about 4,000 residents, and they're still mostly Republicans. They have just about accepted that we're there. We're there. <laughs> They have told, I have heard one of the realtors say, taking someone through Lake San Marcos. Now, we have a Republican women's club here that's very active. And, and we also have a Democratic club. But they let men come because they don't have enough members. <laughs> so we get a lot of kick out of fun, the way they treat us. When we first started, we were having so many people at our meetings, they would come by and say, there aren't this many Democrats in Lake San Marcos. And then people would come up to me and say, how many of these people don't live here? And I would say, oh, maybe four or five. But we do have, on our board, we have someone from Rancho Bernardo. We have some, our presidents from Escondido. So we really don't just have Lake San Marcos. But Lake San Marcos gets credit for it. Now, our fundraising, we do in different ways, but we have dues, we have renewal dues, and we use that we are very, very stingy about our money because we want it to, uh, for candidates and for election. That doesn't mean that we go without. We have our banner, banner. we bought our own banner and, and uh, booth at the uh, booth for fairs. We bought that the first year. And uh, sometimes, I think CDC provides that. But it's expensive, and clubs can do that. Now, we, uh, we do have a raffle at every meeting. And those of us who are on the board just give the money back if we win, and I seem to win a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, we do try to find people who will run for office, we try to find people in clubs who will become leaders in the Democratic Party. We try to innovate program, have innovative 
innovation and programs to develop new ones. And like I said, I don't know how the Democratic Party could run without clubs. We really do need them. In our county, and I think it, I, I'm using San Diego County as kind of a model because we do have a council of clubs. And the presidents meet once a month and they learn from each other and get to know each other. And I think that is a very good thing. Now, I don't think that's true in all counties. And I talk to people who had one club, are just starting a club, or had some of the uh, central committee people didn't have any clubs. And I think that our job would be to help develop clubs everywhere, all over California. We are a blue state, but there are some very red parts of this state. And I didn't know that until I started making these calls. And I found people who live up in the hills, and we don't have that in San Diego particularly, but they live up there and they're like mountain people. They, they live up there because they want to be away from me. <laughs> 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 Oh, you know what I'm talking about. There's a Democrat that's up there. <laughs> when someone says to me, we can't start a club here because there are too many Republicans, I just laugh. We started a club where so many Republicans, we wouldn't even admit we were Democrats. And now look what we have. So there are Democrats everywhere. They're all over. You just have to find them. And if you reach out to them, they'll surface. That's about what I have to tell you. Oh, we did develop a survey. Is that a? We developed a survey, which we will be sending out to clubs. And it's, uh, it's, come. It, it's an easy <coughs> survey. I mean, it just tells your name, where you're located, the officers, the, con the contact information is very important so that we can contact clubs. The number of members you have when you were founded. Some people, some clubs have been founded for 20 years and others only two or three. We have more and more young Democrats. More and more colleges are founding uh, clubs. And so I think from us, probably what we would CDC, that is, what we think you need and would like to give you our training workshops. Workshops for treasurers, workshops to help you grow your clubs, and workshops to help develop new clubs. Every area. I mean, LA has 100 clubs. And I just called this, they said, call this one guy. I called him and told him what I wanted. And he said, when do you want it? They'll send me all that information. I send Jerry all that information. Um, we have a situation where we have a really long, well-established Democratic club in our area. And my question, and, and the, okay, so in our area, we have a very well-established, long-standing Democratic club. Where's your area? There, Culver City, in, in the LA area. And we have a group of people who are coming together to champion progressive values. And we're very concerned about being active and effective and not in competition with our local Democratic Club, most of our, our members of the Democratic Club. So I just want to know if you have any experience with that and what you would recommend. You mean two clubs that are competitive? It's, it's a brand, it's a forming progressive alliance, a forming group, and then there's a well-established Democratic Club. So the forming progressive group doesn't want to be in competition, and we've already done things to, you know, incorporate, reach out, be collaborative, and so on. I just want to know if you had any experience with that that you could share, you know, about how we can uh, be effective and not work against each other. Because we, we feel a need. So we could hear. Maybe she could repeat what I said. Uh, she's asking, like, uh, if you belong to a strong club. And then a progressive club starts, or a progressive program, right. and you join in. Are you in competition, and how do you handle that? And I don't think you should be in competition at all. You can belong to several clubs, and you 
progressives have their own, it's like a caucus, a pro, uh, progressive is, and like a women's caucus. And then we have a lesbian gay caucus. You can belong to as many clubs as you want. It does not have to be. There's too much to do for everybody. <coughs> no one club can do it all, particularly in LA or anywhere else for that matter. Now, clubs are not all, uh, for example, I called um, a central committee chief and she's a lawyer. And, um, but she always talked to me. She told me they had one club, gave me his name and number, and I called him. He gave me the information. And I forgot to find out how often they did. We call it certified, but it's really not certified. Chartered. 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 It's chartered. So I asked him, I asked her, I said, when do you charter your clubs? She said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> She said, call my club president. So I called him. And I said, when did you charter your club? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he said, I, I'm on the e-board. I'm a state delegate. I go to all these meetings. I've been president of this club ever since it started, and I probably will be until it's over. We don't charter. <laughs> and you get a lot of different things like that. I call uh, one woman. She just started a club, Kings County, I think. And um, she was young. She said, there's nobody in our club over 30 years of age. And I said, is that because you're the Democrats club? She said, no, it's because nobody else wants to join. <laughs> That's kind of unusual, because so many of our clubs are full of the elderly people. And uh, I said, well, who is your president? And she said, we don't have a president. We have a council. And I said, why don't you have a president? She said, because we don't want one person to assume all the responsibility or to do everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, every club is different. And you're not going to change them, particularly. So I said, well, who do I contact? She gave me herself as a contact. And then she enjoyed talking so much. She said, well, let's have lunch at state convention. And they are so eager to talk. They are so eager to have contact that it's really been a lot of fun. I'm back in California uh, for 20 years. Do you still have this handbook? This, I had this handbook from about 15 years ago. I'm starting the club in Merced, which works out to be mad. The mad <laughs> Merced Associated Democrats. And we had the same situation, a good, solid, old club that's kind of just disappearing. Oh, I see one person I met before. I have a member for you. Great. So anybody else who's in the Merced area, we could use your help, and we'd like to have you with us. Thank you. We, we do have that uh, handbook with CDC, and we're working now to update it. And if any of you have an interest in helping us with that, sharing the experiences and ideas that you've gained from your own particular club, please contact us about that.